I'm reading from Proverbs chapter 23 from the authorized version of the scriptures. What is that? Uh, commonly referred to as the King James Version. If you have an authorized version of the scriptures, go ahead and turn within the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 23. Okay, what you do is you take the scriptures, open it up somewhere in the middle. It'll either be in Psalms or Proverbs, okay? And you want to turn your pages that way, okay, towards your left, okay? Proverbs chapter 23, verse 29 on to the close of the chapter. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Woe, sorrow and contentions. Who hath babbling? Blah, 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 blah. Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Look at verse 30. They that tarry long at the wine. Within the New Testament, within the Pauline epistles, uh, in the book of 1 Timothy, I believe it is, 1st or 2nd Timothy, um, Paul says unto Timothy, to use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine oft infirmities. Okay? And also within the first five books of Moses, the Torah, um, it makes mention about giving that those of the children of Israel may spend their, their money on whatever they like, including strong drink. The truth is, dear friend, that the use of strong drink and wine, alcohol, uh, real alcohol. There is such a thing as a synthetic alcohol out there, which is not healthy for you. But, for example, wine, ferment, fermented grape, in, taken in moderation, is healthier for you than many people like to give it thought. For example, you get some pure cocoa, 100% cocoa, okay? And you couple that with a glass of red wine, very good for high blood pressure. Very good for high blood pressure, okay? Also, um, a glass of red wine coupled with uh, red meats and also pasta, very good for digestion, very good for the blood, and so on and so forth. But the thing is, verse 30, they that tarry long at the wine, moderation. Church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth. The truth is, the scriptures do not condemn the use of alcohol. What it does condemn is drunkenness, excess. Paul mentions that, um, give not yourself over to a wine which is excess. Okay? Give yourself over onto it. In layman terms, don't get drunk. Moderation. Wine. Pure. Fermented grape, red wine, especially, pure, is quite beneficial for the body. It truly is. And like I said, couple that with some pure cocoa, which usually tends to be dark chocolate, pure cocoa, 
which is bitter to the taste, not sweet. Okay? Couple that together in small moderation. Very good for you. Very, very good for you. But like I said, the scriptures condemn drunkenness. Let's continue here in Psalm, in, excuse me, in Proverbs chapter 23. <clears throat> at verse 30. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent, it stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. And speaking from my experience as a lost man, almost 13 years ago, um, and those of you out there will recognize the saying, and um, they refer to it as being beer goggles, where thine eyes shall behold strange women. They call it beer goggles, meaning that if you drink enough alcohol, that almost any woman will seem attractive to you. Okay? Those of you who are familiar with drunkenness know exactly of what I speak. And there are those of you out there who might scoff at that and laugh. <laughs> yeah. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Um, they call it liquid courage. As a lost man, almost three years ago, uh, 13 years ago, excuse me, um, when I would get drunk, I would have a lot of liquid courage. And I would also utter perverse things. You know, for those of you out there who give yourself over to drunkenness, your, uh, your eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. You wake up in the morning, Hung over, and you're like, who is this I am in bed with? And then you find out that you said things to offend many people and put yourself in the worse liking than you were before? Oh, but it's fun, right? Getting out there and being social. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 34, Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, as he, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. Look at that verse. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea. Um, the Jesuits sank the Titanic. I hate boats. Um, I would rather walk a hundred miles than go a half a mile on a boat. Okay? I do not like boats. But what is that talking about? Have you ever out there... I I'm speaking to lost people. If you are of the Church of the Living God and still giving yourself over to drunkenness... You need to you need to talk to the Lord about that, okay? You need to speak to the Lord and have the courage to listen on to what he will say to you through the scriptures. But you drink so much that you get sick, that things start spinning. You can be laying down on a bed, looking up, and everything is spinning, right? They that tarry long at the wine. Verse 35. They have stricken me, shalt thou say. And I was not sick. 
They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Ah. Now look at that verse different, please. Please. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. You know, you get enough alcohol into you where uh, your eyes will be, shall behold strange women and thine heart shall utter perverse things to where you're getting on, where the whole room, everything around you is spinning. You can drink enough alcohol to where you, your pain will not register immediately. They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. <laughs> um, you know, there are those who get that liquid courage in them because you're having a good time in a social atmosphere, uh, atmosphere, right? Listening to the thumpity, 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 and he uh, looking at scal uh, um, scandalously clad women. Showing off things that only a husband should be looking at. Within a bar setting, right? Feed him a lot of alcohol. Your eyes behold strange women. Another man who is drunk might come up to someone who is in this state and bah, punch him. It seems that when alcohol is in abundance within the body, the pain level goes down until the morning. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. Because it's fun, right? Because it's fun. Yeah. But also now, go to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31. <clears throat> Verses 1 on to verse 9. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. What, my son, and what the son of my womb, and what the son of my vows? Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Look in 1 Kings chapter 11 about King Solomon, the ultimate player, if you will. He had over a thousand, he had a thousand women at his disposal. And not one night stands a thousand women who were loyal unto him. Okay? You go look that up on your own time, please. But um, give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Why? lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. But look at this. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So, what does this mean? Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Okay? And when you balance that off of Proverbs chapter 23, where it says in verse 35, They have stricken me, shalt thou say, and I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. And then here in verse 6, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Strong drink. 
okay? Strong drink could be a very potent alcoholic drink, but also some kind of pain numbing thing, okay? Which like I said, any of you who have any experience of being drunk, unfortunately I do when I was a lost man almost 13 years ago, okay? Like I said, your pain tolerance goes up because you get so drunk you can't feel things. And wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. So is this condoning because you have a heavy heart to go get drunk? Well, uh, look at what is being said here in the first in the verses before that, verses four and five. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. The afflicted, who are the afflicted? Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Those of heavy hearts ought to be seeking the Lord. That is why it is warned here, it is warned here in verse 4 and 5, it is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. Lest they drink and forget, forget the law, and pervert the judgment of any of the, afflict, of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, ready to die. And wine unto those that be of heavy, of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. But see, those in poverty ought to go on to the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the saying? Verse eight, open thy mouth for, for the dumb. Dumb is someone who cannot speak in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Ah. Verse six, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Verse eight, open thy mouth for the dumb in the, ca in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Verse nine, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. You're poor and needy. Why are you not looking unto the Lord? Oh, because you don't believe in the Lord, right? What? Why should you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Because look at these people from church buildings. Look at these charismatic people who said God said that uh, Trump was going to win the election. Right. Right. Right, right, right. Hmm. Someone who knows the Lord and has a personal relationship with him and is conversant with the scriptures. Ought what? Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. And open thy mouth for the, for the dumb in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. See, alcohol could be used as a pain-numbing agent. And those who are sorrowful, poor and needy, they need to look unto the Lord. But especially nowadays, how easy is it to go and get yourself a can of beer, get yourself a bottle of John Daniels? Brett, why, why are you talking about this? 
Today, dear friends, is another Roman Catholic holiday, St. Patrick's Day. And I can remember as a lost man, <clears throat> working in the food industry, and also as a lost man using, as myself would use today as a day to excuse going and getting inebriated. Because you're having a good time, right? Let me drink and drown away my sorrows. You just read out of the scriptures. That's what. Poor needy are to look unto him who is going to guide them unto all truth. And who would that be? The Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ will send his ambassador and speak through that ambassador, one who is of his bones and his flesh. Today, today there are many out there, especially with how depressing things are in the world right now, where people in this country are waiting like dogs for a small morsel of bread from the government to keep them afloat. And the weariness and the sadness of all that's happening. And here is St. Patrick's Day. And that filthy, disgusting harlot, Roman Catholicism. <laughs> it's going to have what? Their St. Patrick's Day parades and whatnot like that. You know, the Irish Catholic kind of thing. You know. Today, many people are going to use this day as an excuse To go and get inebriated. To go and get intoxicated. Instead of seeking things that are that in overabundance can be very detrimental to your health. Instead of looking to things that where if you drink enough, your eyes will behold strange women and your mouth will utter perverse things. You'll have liquid courage. You, uh, you won't remember things. Uh, your pain level will go down until you are sober and then you'll be racked with pain. Huh? You lay down on a bed, everything is spinning, and plus in an atmosphere where there's that thumpity, thumpity, thumpity music that goes faster than your heart and is at low bass tune and tone to that thumping bass, which can disrupt your heart pattern. Did you know that? Did you know that? And you're having a good time. And then there are those out there who will um, will be in this state and then decide to get behind the wheel of a car. Have you ever known anybody in your life who has lost someone because of someone who got behind the wheel of a, of a car and drove drunk, passed out, blacked out? My own wife was in a brutal accident many years ago, which killed her husband. And <laughs> basically crippled her. If I would allow her to speak here in such a thing, she would testify of that. But that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. 
But you're having a good time, right? D dear friend, I challenge you. I, I don't care what you believe. I challenge you. Get the authorized version of the scriptures, referred to as the King James Version, KJV. Look in the New Testament. Look in the book of Romans. Look in the Psalms. Start in the book of Romans. People like, you know, there is disagreements between people. That, ah, it's better to start in the Gospels and stuff like that. And yeah, yeah, but you know, in personal experience, the book of Romans. And in, in all reality, dear friend, let's, let's be honest. And like I said, I'm not addressing the church of the living God. Uh, uh, hey, Brad, you've said that so, uh, inaccurately referred to as Christians, okay? Um, the truth is you don't need an excuse, do you? But hey, it's St. Patty's Day. You might be Irish, too. An Irish Catholic. <laughs> and those of you out there who are going to use this day as an excuse to revel in drunkenness, remember what we looked at in the Proverbs. It's having a good time, right? Those days will come to an end soon, dear friend. And what will you do in the end thereof? Brethren, Church of the Living God, this for you. <coughs> My wife and I have prayed this morning. I, we pray for many people. Uh, but we have prayed that that the Lord will keep those safe today. S those whom he will to keep safe. Um, from those who might get drunk and decide to drive a vehicle. However the Lord would lead you, I, I, I encourage you, Church of the Living God, to pray on such things today. Because um, you know, I, I, coming out of the food industry, you know, restaurants and bar industry kind of thing. Uh, my mother raised three children, being a bartender and waitress. My sister, your sister, um, used to be a bartender herself, okay? I used to be a cook, a chef. I even tended bar for a very uh, little, for a very small time myself, you know? Days like this. There's nothing new under the sun. But what can be new for you today, dear friend, is that you make the choice not to give yourself over and keep yourself in a stupor, which the devil, Satan, wants you to be in. You're going to die someday. I 
hope it isn't today because you decide to go and indulge yourself in drunkenness using St. Patrick's Day as an excuse or any day of that matter. Like I said, the scriptures do not condemn using alcohol, but it is in moderation not to get drunk. Yes, I myself enjoy every once in a while a glass of good red wine, pure red wine, not genetically modified. And the real stuff is out there, you know. One glass, you know, helpful for the body, digestion, and many other attributes of health, especially with the dark, pure cocoa, stuff like that. Please consider, any of you who may see this, please consider, please consider these things. In the description box, there's going to be a video let us reason together, you and I. I challenge you to watch that. What's going to make this day different than the, the one that was prior? I love you. Please consider these things.